Hi guys, Hi. this is Kopiko Star. So this is gonna be my top five, maybe top five. Maybe top six. Bo tips video. Alright. Alright. I've been teaching so much. So this I was gonna do like an edited video, but I decided no. Just wing I, it. That's too much work, so I'm let, I'm gonna wing it. I'm gonna wing it. So the first tip is the two major causes of bad sound. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do this. The first tip is knowing about the beginner sound. You know that beginner sound where scratchy noises. Where Bee! Like when kids first start playing, they do this. They they go like right. That is because. Actually, I don't want to do that one first. I want to do. <laughs> you say that now. The first tip. I thought we were gonna wing it. Okay, all right. Now we are winging it. Oh, okay. The first tip is the two causes of scratch. So when I say scratch, I mean like you know like when people when you hear like that. There's two major causes. If you know about those two causes, then you can prevent it more easily, right? So the first one is, if your too bow is to too close to the bridge, bridge, right? So I'm putting my bow close to the bridge and watch this. So if you know about it, you just want to play in the middle and you can have a much nicer sound. Also goes to the, wait, wait, wait. The, the other cause yeah. of the scratch is if you press your left hand fingers. This is not a bow tip, but this is relevant. If you, you just like touch it and then you play, it's just gonna. Yeah. If you press your finger halfway down, watch this. I'm pressing my finger halfway down. You can't see it, but I'm pressing halfway. So you can't normally see this when people do this. You can't just see it. So if you know about it, you can detect it easily. Just press it all the way down. It's nice. Right? So this goes into the second tip, which is you need a straight bow, right? <clears throat> you need a straight bow because if you don't have a straight bow, look what happens. It The bow moves away and towards the bridge. Watch this. And it this. gives you a squeaky sound. It gives you a squeaky sound because... It's close to the bridge. It's close to the bridge. So... Watch this. I go like, I'm not straight, right? And then it goes towards the bridge when I do a down bow. Watch this. And then you get the squeezing sound. But if I go up bow, wait. If I go up bow, I move the other way also. It moves the other way. And it makes a weird, deeper sound. Well, it just goes, no, it it goes out to the fingerboard. Yeah, and yes. So let's try the other way. Yep, it goes that way. So how to practice with this? How to get a straight bow? So I'll give two recommendations. The first one is close your eyes and do really long bows. Why? Because you cannot make it all the way down if you're not straight. You can't make it all the way down if you're not straight because it moves back and forth, right? Okay. So only if you're straight, you can make it all the way down. And then you get a nice, beautiful sound. Yes. I recommend this method more than method number two because you're using your ears and feeling more. And violin's all about using your ears and your feelings. And your feelings. What? Right? Yeah. Gotta okay. use your feelings. I can't even. Okay. <laughs> and then go to the. The, the second yeah. way is to use a mirror, right? If you use a mirror, you get. You can see. See, I'm using a mirror right now with my phone. Also, another thing is, as you get closer to the, as you get closer to frog, in order to stay straight, you kind of have to bend your wrist to keep it straight. Alright, uh, that was the second tip, right? Yeah. Tip number three. What was tip number three? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> tip number three. The frog. The no, frog. Okay. The, this is the frog, by the way. This is the frog. <laughs> You know why it's the frog? Because it has a frog egg on it, see? That's why it's called the frog. 
The frog I is. Didn't that. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the frog is the most difficult part of the bow, and the most neglected part of the bow because what it's very get? because it's very heavy, right? See, it's so light up here and it's so heavy up here. When you get when you approach that area, you just scratch because all of a sudden everything feels like a ton of gravity. You have to actually purposely make it light. And the only way you can do that is by ending closer to like, closer to the middle. Oh so yeah, so to make sure you go to the frog, you see this metal thing, you make sure it's on top of the string you're playing, and that's good enough. That's good enough. So just make sure you practice that a lot. That's, that's tip number three, right? Yes. Yeah, do, do I really want to do the smooth bow changes? All right, that's tip number three, right? Yeah. Tip number four, smooth bow changes. Oh man, this is, oh, th this is actually the tip that, that um, talks about the beginner scratchy sound. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So oh. I, I almost said that num as number one. So you know how beginners. Twenty-five miles. Of <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to say that. This is okay. right there. Oh my god. <laughs> you know how beginners they make this sound, right? That's the beginner sound. The reason that happens is because they they they're not thinking about. Bow is bow pressure versus bow speed. So the more bow pressure, the more bow pressure I apply downwards, the more speed I need for it to go sound go with smooth. it to go with it to sound smoothly. Yeah. So if I press down pretty hard, I can't move slowly. Otherwise, it does that. I have to move quickly. So beginners don't know that, right? So whenever they change their bows, whenever they change their bows, <laughs> bow direction, they slow down, but they keep the downward pressure there. That's why this happens. That's why this happens. So you have two options. The first option is when it, if your bow speed slows down, you can make a lighter, lighter pressure, lighter downward pressure. Right? Or the second way, oh god, here comes the 25. <laughs> the second way is to do a perfect U turn. What, what I mean is. <laughs> no. Okay, imagine if I'm moving 25 miles per hour this way. You have to immediately go the other direction 25 miles per hour. So you don't slow down your speed. That because you don't slow down your speed, like if you don't slow down your speed, you can still keep everything pressed in, and it'll you'll be okay. Like this is important for a nice sound. Yes. yes. All right. Number tip five. number five. Is, oh, by the way, the, the, the connection thing, like the keyword is connection, right? That's, that's, oh, so the, keyword now. the keyword is connection. Okay. Okay. The connection thing actually replies, applies, not replies, applies to vibrato also. It, it really re applies, applies, <laughs> applies to replies. <laughs> it really applies to vibrato also. But that's like left hand tips and tricks, right? So let's talk about that later. All right, tip number five. You should learn uh, the 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 first the first two bow tricks that you should learn. I don't know if I should call it that, right? But I recommend that you quickly learn. I think that's what you're gonna call the title. <laughs> what should the tips and tricks? Five tips and tricks. Yeah, bow tips and tricks, right? All right, the things that you should learn quickly is light, light pressure bow swing and heavy pressure bow swing. 
like practice those two uh, contrasts. Of course, the getting the talking about bow swings, it it gets deep, right? It's it gets deep. Very deep. <laughs> it gets deep, right? So we'll just keep it simple, and you should learn. I don't know if it, the uh, the the not camera the the microphone is gonna pick this up, but you should. Here's a li here's light. This is light playing. Like I'm I'm, I'm keeping everything super light across. And this is heavy. You should practice like those two contrasts. So you, this way you can make nice colors and you can make nice dynamics and stuff um, in a concert hall setting. Because in a concert hall setting, you're in a big hall and the people in the back have to hear you, right? But you need to show like piano and forte. And the people in the back have to hear you. So what do you do? You play quickly and then you play lightly so it sounds like piano but you can shoot your sound all the way to the back Pew. see like this oh shoot <laughs> fail so you go shoot your sound very far and it sounds like piano Right? Yes. But if I, if, I, if I press it all the way in, it sounds it sounds deep. It sounds deep and strong. Just like knowing about those two things, you can make interesting stuff happen, right? Because you want to be interesting. That's all. That's all. That's all we we got, right? Yeah, that's think, basically it. All right, so yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you guys so much do I have to for do that? watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching my channel and interacting, and I really appreciate it. This was actually the first try, by the way. This is the first try that we did. So I will see you guys later.